Welcome back compounders, it's Wednesday and so we start again with a stock valuation and we have decided today to talk about Adobe. This is a company that we have talked about in the channel some months ago, it was in the wish list. We have done a stock valuation also and very very recently we have received a comment in one of our videos pointing out to the fact that Terry Smith, who is an investor that we have followed for a very long time and that we still follow, has actually sold his position and the position of the fund, fund Smith, in Adobe. In the comment I think what we read the guy right was that probably Terry sold the position in Adobe because of his fears about AI and the fact that Adobe might not be well positioned within the AI industry or at least as well as other companies. But in any case, Terry Smith sold his position. And so inspired by all of these events, we decide to go back and take another look at Adobe and see what they're doing. And as usual, we are going to use Stratosphere. As you know, if you want to have access to one of their paid plans, you can use our promo code in the description down below. But let's move to Stratosphere. We can search in the search bar for Adobe, A-D-B-E is the ticker, and we can see that from the peak in uh, November 2021, it lost about 50%. Uh, however, the fundamentals look pretty okay. The only thing that we can see quite clearly is that revenue growth has slowed down, but still it's quite good. If we select trailing, we can see the trailing 12 month performance quarter on quarter. And we can see that the revenue has always grown. Another very good quality of Adobe is that the margins are very high and stable. The gross margin is around 87, 88%, and it's very stable. And this is one of the reasons we think that they are more protected from inflation than other companies. This is also evident if we select the operating income. The operating income margin is very high, most recently around 35%, but also it is steadily growing. It's an outstanding performance to grow the operating income with this stability for any company. So this gives us a lot of peace of mind. Another factor that allows companies to be more resilient to inflation spikes and inflation in general is their capital expenditure. So if we go to cash flow statement and we select free cash flow, we can see the capital expenditure of Adobe and we can see that it's extremely low. This is essentially almost negligible. It's 10% or less of operating cash flow. This also allows the company to be very resilient in the face of inflation. What we can observe is that the CAPEX grew quite substantially. For example, it was around 200 million in December 16, and it's now 400 million. So let's say a 2x in six years, but it's still in absolute value very small. If we check the capital efficiency of Adobe, if we go to ratios, capital efficiency, we can see that the return on invested capital went up in the past few years. The effect of an increasing return on invested capital to the value of a company is something that we will discuss in the future. But of course, intuitively, this adds value. And we can see that in the past few years since 2017, so in the past six years, it's around 20% and very, very stable. It increased, it's now around 30%. And uh, since they don't pay any dividend, this means that in the very long run, we should expect uh, some return that is close to this. Of course, we don't know exactly the direction of this since it increased very substantially. And before in 2014 and 15, for example, it was 10% or below that. But in any case, it's a very good performance to have. One of the reasons Adobe was recently in the media is because the UK regulators are looking into the acquisition of Figma. So recently Adobe bought this company for $20 billion, which corresponded to a very high valuation, about 50 times sales, if I remember correctly. And it should be completed by the end of the year. But now that the UK are investigating it, we don't know. 
Great. So actually, it's also interesting to try to understand a little bit more why the return on invested capital has been able to increase so much, especially after, as Guy was saying, 2014, 2015. You can see that in 2014, it was around 5%, and then it, it increased pretty impressively all the way up now to 30%. But even in 2016 or 2017, we were already in double digits and closer to 20% than 10%. And so to understand a little bit more what has happened, Stratus sphere also allows you to go and look at the KPIs. This is how they have it here on the left column on Stratosphere. These are the key performance indicators. And so, for example, we can scroll down and take a look at what they've done with digital media revenue, digital experience revenue, publishing and advertising revenue, and digital experience subscription revenue. Because basically, in around 2013, Adobe started its cloud, which contains all the softwares that many creators use, such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and then there's also the document cloud, which includes Adobe Acrobat. And in particular, if we look at this digital media ARR, we can see that around 2013, they really started to bring in more money. And this is exactly where when they started their own cloud system and service. And you, as you can see here, we went from $800 million to almost 2 billion. And then it kept growing over the years. So actually, if we instead of looking at the KPIs, now we look at the segments, we can decide to plot, for example, this digital experience subscription revenue, the digital media revenue, and also the digital experience revenue. Because as you can see, they also have these other publishing and advertising segments but that doesn't really contribute as much to the final revenues. And if we scroll all the way up, we can see now everything plotted together. So this green line here is the return on invested capital that we were looking at before. And then you can see that from 2016, this yellow column starts to be present, which is a digital experience subscription. And basically this was 1 billion in uh, 2016. And now in 2022, basically it was 4 billions. And in the meantime, you can see also as the digital media revenue increased quite strongly, the CAGR actually is 15% for both the digital media revenue and the digital experience revenue. So they, in our opinion, have contributed very much to this increase on return on invested capital over the years. So the switch from the original business where you were actually purchasing software from Adobe to the subscription based model which has become popular also across other companies like Microsoft for example has been probably one of the main responsibles for this key increase in performance and optimization of their business which is reflected in the return on invested capital. Great, Matt. And understanding these drivers of growth and profitability is actually good because in this way we can try to assess whether or not this return on invested capital is stable. So it will continue to be high in the future. And since this is, in our view, mostly due to the cloud and the transition to the subscription-based model, we think that the return on invested capital will be stable and high well into the 20s. So finally, if we want to assess whether or not the shares are expensive, we can take a look at the free cash flow and we can try to assess the growth that is baked into the price. If we look at the free cash flow from 2013, we can check the trailing 12 months result of the free cash flow on a quarterly basis. And we can observe that it's almost always increasing and the CAGR is impressive, is more than 20%. For a quick valuation, we use the Warren Buffett way, which is we are trying to assess the certainty equivalent free cash flow, and we discount it with the long-term treasury yield, so around 4 or 5%. Of course, part of this exercise is subjective. So recently, the free cash flow was around 7 billion. And at the beginning, we double checked that the capex is quite small, almost negligible. But one of the major factors that I would like to use here is the stock-based compensation. If we go under operating activities in the cash flow statement, we can see that the stock-based compensation increased quite substantially, and it's now around $1.5 billion. The stock-based compensation is an expense, but it's not a cash outflow for the company. However, maybe we can be very conservative and just remove it today. This is not exactly right because it could appear in the future as dilution or the company may need to offset the stock-based compensation with some buybacks. 
But in any case, if we want to be very conservative, I would like to be conservative. I remove almost all of it from the free cash flow. So from 7.3 billions, I remove, let's say, almost 1.3 billions and I land at six. And we can discuss whether or not this is actually a certainty equivalent free cash flow, whether or not this will go down in the future. But I would use this as my baseline. So I would use six billions and I will capitalize it at 4%. This would give us a $150 billion valuation for the enterprise value. The net debt of Adobe is negligible. So the market value, the fair value is essentially the same. It would be 150 billion. If we use an even more conservative assumption for the free cash flow, let's say 5 billion, then it would be 125 billion. So since the market cap, as of today, we can see on Stratosphere that it's 160 billion. So we are very close to the former valuation. So the valuation with 6 billion of free cash flow. And we are not very distant from the other one with 5 billion of free cash flow. Market participants seem to be very skeptical that Adobe will continue to grow at a fast rate. And they are discounting very little growth going forward as if almost the company is maturing very, very fast. And we could try to assess why this is the case. And one of the major issues probably that it's in the mind of everybody now, not only regarding Adobe, but more in general, is AI and the generative AI models. So there are a lot of comparisons made online between, for example, Mid Journey and the AI generative model used by Adobe or developed by Adobe. And the results with Mid Journey seem to be better, but there are also problems when it comes to the data that are used to train these models. There are many questions regarding the rights to use some data for training, and some analysts have pointed out the resilience of the moat of Adobe, especially when we look at it in terms of the professional community that uses Adobe's products. Great, and thanks, Guy. This concludes the analysis for Adobe Compounders. Let us know what you think about this in the comments down below. If you want, you can also consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And we are going to see you on Friday for another stock analysis. Bye-bye.